I highly respect you, ever since you were the rector at the university, uh, vice rector, you've always tried to help us. And thank you for always trying to do what is best for our country. Big thanks to the Agribusiness Forum. I will try to cite some examples for our discussion, explain a few things about the applications we have in uh, farming and digital farming, both in the world and in Greece. Starting with uh, what happens, first of all, you heard about the challenges. Why do we need that? There's an increase in population, we need more food, and of course, there's an increase in the arable lands, we need to see how we can deal with the fact that uh, there is restricted land so that we have for a growing population. And to understand that some of the arable land is used for other purposes, not just for food. What are we? There's this big exhibition, Agritechnica, in Hanover, in November. I was there in the past and there were lots of stands with electric tractors, not because they're better than the conventional tractors, but this is part of the broader sustainability discussion in production, so a company that wants to produce sustainable products is thinking about energy a lot. There uh, we also saw some spraying drones. Here you can see our drone that we have at the laboratory, again spraying, uh, sprinkling. We've been using that in the area of uh, Spata for the Agriculture University, so this type of drone. We're trying to look into the problems and the opportunities that we have. Another, this is a robot actually, robot tractor. Uh, the one at the exhibition, and then ours at the bottom of the slide, again with further applications in the farm that we have at the Agricultural University in the area of Sparta, near Athens. And we have some demos. And what we see here is that there are many robotic solutions at this point. And although we know that in the past they were used for laboratories, now we see that there are robotic solutions that farmers, not, not really in Greece, but at least in Europe, have started buying. This is a machine used for uh, herbicides. All the energy comes from the PV panels you can see on top. So this is extremely sustainable, it's very light, it's easy to use, it can cause no problems because as I said it's very light so if you don't operate it properly nothing too bad will happen and you can take it from one farm to another. What are we doing in Greece? Very briefly some of our applications, some things that we have been doing. Here you can see an important uh, research job uh, financed by Corteva. This is the third year that we've been uh, working on. We've, we've worked with tomatoes and cotton. We have in Thessaly 81 producers, 81 farmers. We have three hybrids of tomato and on a weekly basis we see some development maps for the yieldings. We use all possible solutions that we have uh, through digital technology, meaning that we have uh, the satellite uh, images, we use drones, and we also use land sensors that are placed on tractors. At the end of the mapping of the production, we also try to map all yieldings to see whether the production that we have is the final production and then you have um, these bars with the actual and estimated yield by producer. 
90% correlation in hybrid systems 40 days earlier than the final production, the final harvest. Then an experiment that we conducted in the context of Horizon 2020, it was called Big Data Grapes, it was, as you understand, about grapes and big data, uh, grapes that we can turn into wine. So, again, we collected data, we used sensors, then we compared the data, we used all sensors that uh, we could place in the arable lands. You can see the various sensors and the various vehicles that we use trying to move around fast. This is big data. This is a big project, approximately 5 million. And Agrono, a Greek company, is coordinating that. What we saw here is that we had up to 96% correlation with production based on the digital maps. And from the beginning of, uh, up to the beginning of June, early August. Two more applications very quickly. One has to do with uh, precision agriculture in olive trees. There was a previous project we worked on again in the context of Horizon 2020. The one I'm showing you is from the area of Messinia. Uh, it's 1700 trees, olive trees. Here we have the mapping of uh, production, so you understand 1,700 trees, it's a lot. And uh, we have the harvest every two years. And this way we can understand what would be the best irrigation for the trees, the best uh, lubrication for the trees. We have this map for a sample per stremer, and we saw that Greece produces a lot uh, due to the subsoil. So we have arable land, uh, it's a combination of um, uh, the potassium in the soil as well. So. Here you can see what we did, the farmer here, the producer, he takes a look at the map. The, doing the map, you know, producing that is easy, but then uh, what you do with that? And of course the farmer here who's smoking, you know, which is so typical, he's looking at this, he says, fine, I have the map, but what do I do with that? Uh, so the uh, agronomer, the farmer, we also go there and we... tried to um, uh, use specific pesticides based on the maps that we had to achieve optimum results. Again, further mapping to take a look at the soil, berry zones, what is heavy, what is lighter. We also received some uh, watermelons. We took them to the laboratory. We measured that at different temperatures to see what happens after the harvest. And this is uh, from Mr. Xanthopoulos, his own pictures. And then we found the bricks. We saw that the sugars go up uh, after a week, then they drop. But for 20 degrees, that was at 10 degrees, uh, at 20 degrees, you can see that um, sugars go up and then the drop is not so abrupt. So we found some practical solutions there. In this yielding, we have um, a flow meter to measure the quantity of the irrigation waters. And what we find here is by using faeces, Agrotica has about 12 stands. You can use something like that to get solutions, save a lot of water, increase your produ production, 
And based on the temperature, we can't understand what we need because uh, sometimes there's a loss of water due to the high temperature. But when you realize what the needs are, you can better uh, serve your purpose. This is the auditorium. It's a lovely uh, room. So uh, let's take a look at what you can do. You can sit in an auditorium like ours and then use your smartphone. And this is your yielding. So uh, you can regulate what you want. You can set what you want from afar and then enjoy the rest of the spectacle. Using the drones, that's another video. What can we do with the drones? They're really in fashion, I would say. Captain, we approach the target. And here you can see the missiles. They're not bad missiles. Some of them might be good, actually. So. You have the missiles on the yielding and then shortly afterwards uh, you can see uh, that uh, there are plants growing. Then for carrots, another one. For tomatoes, no water, no precision agriculture with precision agriculture. So you can measure the different needs. I hope it wasn't very tiring. That was a very short summary. Thank you.